Good morning, sisters and brothers. Uh, as we spent time yesterday, those of us who gathered together, uh, walking through the beginning of Matthew 12 and seeing how uh, sometimes our rituals and our rules uh, for uh, following Jesus can actually get in the way <laughs> of our relationship with him. Uh, this morning, I was still reflecting on that as I was reading from the book of Ezekiel, verse, uh, verses 26 and 28 of chapter 37. Uh, this is God's voice saying, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Just, just so we're clear, a, a covenant is different than a contract. Uh, a contract depends on uh, both parties keeping their side. The contract's null and void if one person doesn't do what is expected of them. But a covenant, uh, a covenant is uh, stepped into when uh, uh, when somebody says, "Hey, I, I'm going to keep my word and do what I said, whether you do or not." <laughs> right? So uh, a contract fails when somebody fails to keep their word. Um, and that ends the obligations. But a covenant is, no, I'm in this. I'm giving my word, I'm going to follow through whether you do or not. Hear God's words. I will make a covenant of peace with them. I It will be an everlasting covenant. Then he describes what he wants. He says, I will establish them. Them is, is us, the people he's created, the family he wants. He says, I will establish them and increase their numbers. I will put my sanctuary, put my home. I will, my presence will be there. I will put my sex sanctuary among them forever. My dwelling place, my home, where I live will be where, be with them. And I will be their God and they will be my people. And then the nations, that's, that word there is ethnicities, all the people groups of the world will know what? That the Lord, that I, the Lord, make Israel holy, make his people holy, when my sanctuary is among them forever. Just reminded that whatever my rituals, whatever my rules, when they get in the way of God's presence, because what God wants, what God wants is to be with us to have a sanctuary among us, to be with us, to make his dwelling place with us. And he's present with us now. I was uh, listening uh, to a sermon this weekend by Dr. Derwin Gray, and he said this. He said, the problem with humanity is not sin. The problem with humanity is worshiping something other than the Father, Son, and Spirit, which leads to sin. Sin is the negative fruit of what's called idolatry. Worship is this, he says, I find my love, significance, identity, and purpose in something or someone. And Jesus is saying, I'm the ultimate lover. I give you a new identity. I give you significance. I give you purpose. And your significance is this. You become a son or daughter of the most high king. <laughs> All of this brings us back to centering ourselves on Jesus. That regardless of our rhythms and rules, <laughs> that at the heart of what it means uh, to be human in the story of God is to be longed for and wanted. That God designed us and made us uh, to be his family and to be with us, to be in an everlasting covenant with us. So let that thought today <laughs> stick with you. That what does God want? He wants you. Let's finish with an old prayer. God Almighty, Father, our Father and the Father of our King Jesus, your only begotten Son, give us today bodies unstained, hearts pure, watchful minds, and upright understandings, and the presence of your Holy Spirit that we may obtain and ever hold fast to an unshaken faith in your truth through our King Jesus, your Son, our Lord, through whom be glory to you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Grace and peace, my friend.